Hey folks, thanks for dropping in. Uh, this is an extremely long and boring video, uh, build video, and uh, started out with high hopes of doing a three pickup Ultra Jazzmaster in a warmest body, and ended up uh, with a classic 60s vibe at the end. And uh, I don't know, I just documented all the snags I ran into and uh, how I started off and how I ended up. So if you're not into the nitty gritty of guitar building and all the snags you can run into, you might want to bail out of this video now. Uh, in any event, here it is. And uh, hope you can get a little bit out of it, lessons learned kind of type thing. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again. Take care. Okay, here we go again. Uh, starting on Jazzmaster. Uh, birds I made the top. Pretty smooth. A couple of spots that have a little, little graininess to them. So I'm gonna just hit them with a 800 sandpaper, and then we'll get to get the staining. back a little bit real quick. Okay. I'm pretty smooth. Okay, so we're getting ready to stain. I'm using a Minwax Golden Pecan. And it's not like the green or the cherry blossom I used on the last two guitars. It's kind of like more of a watery stain, which is a little easier to use. So I had a piece of a veneer, bird's eye maple. And I put a couple coats on. I put one coat on the end there and then a two or three coats in the middle. So we'll see how things go here. I'm just going to do it later later finish overall so we'll see how things see how things shake out here a little lighter than I thought well, that's good Nice. Let this soak in a little bit. And I won't bore you with the other coat. Okay, so stains are done on the body uh, on the Jazzmaster. And it's got a bird's eye maple top. And the neck is from Warmoth also. And my intentions are to tape off the fretboard with uh, Scotch Sharp Lines tape and ever so delicately um, try to stain the main part of the neck, the shaft part and the headstock just a tad darker to kind of match the body and then spray it with a clear satin, just a real light thin coat of clear satin spray, um, polyacrylic. And uh, probably gonna do the body and satin also. And I had these pickup covers I had in a previous video from Funked Up Guitars on Etsy. So we'll see how they look as things go along. I'm going to have to pop out, I think I'm going to have to pop out the purple material and uh, just kind of shave it a little bit on the back side because um, the material is kind of thick and the pole pieces don't come all the way through the material. On a regular Jazzmaster that, that top is a lot thinner. 
So I uh, might have to do a little work there and we'll see how it looks as, as I get the finish done on the guitar. And other than that, I think things are moving along. I bought a Jazzmaster, a loaded Jazzmaster Ultra pick guard and I have a five-way switch. I'm gonna try and incorporate a center pickup. I have the DiMarzio that I didn't use, uh, double rail humbucker, single coil size. So I'm gonna try and put that in the middle and if I can figure out the wiring and not hose it up too bad, I'll put a five-way switch in so I can get all three pickups and still have the uh, adjustments, all the original Jazz Master Ultra adjustments. So onwards we, we fumble along here and see how things shake out. And uh, it's coming along. Everything's subject to change as we go here. Just a quick couple of seconds here, just finishing up the masking on the fretboard. And I think it might work out okay. Um, well, I'm okay with the masking tape uh, job here. Hopefully the stain will cooperate and not try to sneak up under the tape. Uh, I'm good. What I'm gonna do is use a real, real, real light coat and maybe do a few applications uh, so it doesn't really, it's not thick enough to really start penetrating and seeping under the tape. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. This is a wet and wild ride. I've never done this before. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start on the headstock first. And uh, see how things go here. Just kind of blend it in a little bit from the, where the tape is. Okay. The proving point will be when the tape comes off and we'll see what it looks like. Really not staining it too much here. And it'll hopefully look okay when it's done. Kind of just stroking down from the tape area. And hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't go through the tape too. Um, may not be as dramatic as I thought it was, but well, let's give him a little, little color. Okay, so far so good. Um, I, think, I think I got it all. Let that soak in a little bit and give it another coat while my kitchen stinks up here. I got the windows open. Hopefully, hopefully like I said, it doesn't go through the tape or under the tape. Well, it's been about a day since I stained the neck and uh, it's kind of glossy. Uh, I think Warmoth puts dipsies in an oil before they send them out. So um, I'll just peel the tape off and, and see how good my nasty job was. Well, it came out okay, I think. Looks pretty good. Um, Yeah, not too, not too bad. I surprise myself once in a while. But I uh, had a pretty good, pretty good uh, separation here. So the shaft's just a tad darker than the fretboard, which I left natural. And I might just hit this with a real fine sandpaper, like a 1500 or a 2000 or something, just a tad. And then uh, spray it with a satin finish, uh, kind of leaning towards satin finishes more because uh, if you do nick or scratch your guitar a little bit, they're a little easier to touch up than the gloss. I mean, the gloss looks awesome, but 
a little bit more of a maintenance uh, concern. Uh, but yeah, it came out pretty good. I don't know how well this is going to focus here, but... Yeah, okay, pretty happy with it. And uh, we'll get a coat of clear on these today, this in the body. And uh, keep on rolling as always. Okie doke. I got a 800 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to give this a real fine sanding. And scuff it up with a tad. Never finished the neck before, so we'll see. See how this goes. Warmoth claims their oil bath or soap that they give the mix is compatible with most finishes, so we'll see. Okay, so we're going to do this in a minute. Be right back. the body got elevated a little bit and we'll hit it with some Inlex polycrylic satin finish have this soaking in a warm bath warm water in the sink just to get a little, a little more pressure out of it we'll see Want to give that a super light satin spray and we'll see how that works. After these dry, I'll flip them and do the other side. And hopefully, the air flow through that, and we should be good. Hopefully.
just hammering in some string ferrules. Yeah, finish these up. Okay, that takes care of that. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I was going to try and blend a Jazzmaster Ultra loaded pick guard and uh, incorporate a middle strap pickup with a five way switch. Um, and I'm looking at it here, and the strap pickup I have is loaded, but it's got the push pull on it. It's a Yosemite. Uh, it's got the push-pull tone knob for the upper, the neck pickup. So I'm gonna have to noodle this a little bit here, get a few brain cells warmed up, and see how this is gonna work out. If it's, uh, I'm sure, I imagine it's possible if you're an electronics person, uh, but I'm not. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this simmer a little bit and. Uh, See how we go here. I might have to get a, I'm assuming a single row five-way switch and just use the three pots from the Ultra because it's got the S switch in it. And I won't have the push-pull option. So we're just gonna kind of have to kind of wing it here and uh, like I said, get a few brain cells warmed up and see how things are, are gonna shake out as I move along here, so. <laughs> Keep my fingers crossed. It might be a mess. Okay, after much thought and uh, consternation, I figured the only way through this is through it. So I'm going to start by drilling out the three holes for the volume and tone controls from the Ultra Jazz Master. And then I'll start moving things over into the Wormuth pickguard. Uh, I didn't have them drill the holes because I think their original template is a little different than the regular Jazzmaster or the Ultra. So I'll just start by doing that, drilling out the three holes and uh, I'm just going to use this as a template. I'll drop everything out and uh, overlap the two and drill the holes and then just start and move everything into the, the new pickguard and uh, <laughs> we'll see how things go. One step at a time. Well, got everything dropped out of the Ultra Jazzmaster pick guard, and that came apart fairly easily. Um, so what I'm going to do is just use that as a template and drill out the holes on the Warmoth. Um, they're very close, maybe a tad different. I think the Warmoth is a hair bigger. But uh, what I'll do is just drill those out for the controls and uh, start reassembling and <laughs> keep my fingers crossed that I get the wiring uh, sorted out. Got the holes drilled for the volume and tone. And uh, put them in just a word of caution as some of you might have experienced drilling and pick guards can be uh, a little crazy uh, i started out with a small pilot hole but the bigger drill bits like the 3 8 which is normally where you need to get to uh, they can really grab it and spin it so clamp it down good uh, better if you have a drill press of some sort um, good idea maybe just to go three quarters of the size you need and then file the rest out. Uh, my drill bit grabbed it and kind of oval out the hole a little bit, but um, looks like it'll work okay. So I'm gonna start installing the uh, controls and pickups and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, it looks like uh, we're ready to do a final assembly on the Jazzmaster here. Uh, just a couple of notes, um, had a slight change of <laughs> direction and plans here 
My original intent, as I said earlier, was to go with three pickups with a white perloid um, pick guard. I was gonna do a single coil or a double rail humbucker, um, strat sized in the middle here, and combine a strat wiring harness with the Jazzmaster. And after staring at it for two or three days, the two of them, and trying to figure out the wiring, I uh, common sense prevailed and it, I realized it was way out of my league and I don't even know if it's possible. I'd imagine somebody that's really good with electronics might be able to figure it out. But instead of boogering up two perfectly good wiring harnesses, I figured I'd just do the Jazzmaster Ultra and a, and a custom body and, and neck and uh, leave it at that. So <laughs> at least I'll have a guitar that works at the end. Um, one other note that I, I realized while doing these, um, the Fender, if anybody's interested, the Fender pick guard is cut a little differently than the Warmoth. So the white perloid on top here is the original Fender. And you can see the one from Warmoth underneath it, which is darker. There's a little less than a quarter of an inch difference in route on the bottom pickup. So just a note, if anybody's interested in building uh, a Warmoth Jazzmaster, you might want to buy one of their pick guards. So, uh, and then I ordered, so this is the one I went with the Anaconda pattern. And uh, I ordered it with the two holes, because I don't think they make it for the Ultra yet. Um, so I had a, I drilled a hole down at the bottom here. Um, for the lower tone, and then I have the output jack on the side. So, um, pretty sure everything should fit together okay. And uh, I'll get the bridge on here, and then we'll uh, start putting things together. Just using a Dremel tool here, I'm just going to open up this little hole here that the ground wire comes through for the bridge. And that way, as I did on previous guitar, um, when I solder the ground wire to the, to the bridge, it'll sit flush uh, into the body. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit here. Sounds like another benefit. Okay, so I've got that opened up a little bit. I'll solder the ground wire on the bridge and uh, see if it sits flush and maybe we'll have to tweak that a little more. Just using the Dremel tool here to kind of rough up the bridge a little bit so we get a good, good soldering area. Get a good surface to hopefully solder on. It's a little tough with these sometimes, but we'll give it a shot. Just trying to get the bridge hot enough to get a good solder joint, but these are tough sometimes. Yeah, looks like it'll hold, hopefully. Pretty hot. So that's good. Let that cool down a little bit. Yeah, pretty, pretty good, pretty good snug. Not the prettiest looking solder, but looks like it should work. Okay, so my wonderful soldering uh, job didn't hold very well on the bridge. Uh, didn't hold at all. Um, so uh, I'm just kind of doing a kitchen table uh, backup method here, and I just kind of. 
kind of run the ground wire uh, directly around a screw, one of the bridge screws, and uh, let it go with that. I just routed this out a little more with the Dremel tool, and that'll sit flush hopefully, and uh, we'll get that on the bridge, get the bridge on here. Okay, it looks like the ground wire is sitting pretty flush underneath the bridge. Get the screws in and get to the good stuff, the electronics and you now just finishing up the installation of the saddles here. Get those out of the way. done. We'll get those adjusted for the final setup when we get everything back together here, strings and whatnot. Okay, just gonna add a little foil tape to where I drilled the extra hole for the lower tone control. Uh, there wasn't any foil on there when I got it because there was no hole there, so Warmoth didn't apply any foil. So I'm going to put a piece there, and then I'm going to line the cavities on the body uh, just to control cavities with foil. And, uh, and then we'll check for fit for the controls and the Warmoth pick guard. The last time I did it, uh, the rollers were a little snug, so I had to file out the, the slots a little bit. So we'll see. Now, minor snag here. Um, the fender output jack comes with a little plug on it. So you don't have to solder the wires, but that little plug does not fit through Warmoth's uh, hole for the wire. So I'm going to do my best here to gingerly uh, bore that hole out a little bit. Very gingerly, hopefully. It looks like a quarter inch hole. A little, a little better here. All right, success. And I'll see if the little plug fits through there. I think that went all the way through. And, yeah, man, it's still a little tight. Might have to go one size bigger. But I think, I think it went through all the way. I'm gonna bump it up to three eighths bit. Okay, we're going over to three eighths. Hopefully, I don't bugger this up. I had a feeling I might might not get through, but it looks like it should work now. And yes, I could have easily just cut the wires and soldered them, but um, we'll see if this works. Uh, a few glitches along the way here. The original Fender Jazzmaster output jack plate was chrome, which is not a big deal, but um, didn't quite match the contour of the Wormuth body. It's kind of wobbly. And it's pretty thick and it's got a recess in it, so it would probably be difficult to bend um, nicely. So I had an aftermarket one kicking around, a black one, which will match the black hardware, and was able to uh, put that in a vise and bend it enough to fit the body pretty good. So I'm going to use that. Got the foil installed in the control cavities 
Uh, one other issue with the, not a major issue, but um, the Warmoth pick guards, I think are cut just a hair smaller than the fenders maybe. The, the rollers kind of bind in here a little bit. So I just took a flat file and opened them up a little bit and then uh, chamfered the upper and lower sections to kind of match the contour of the wheel. So hopefully that'll provide a little smoother operation and uh, should be able to get this together here momentarily. Just a little oh by the way, the original fender pick guard for the controls up here, the rollers and the little switch um, had countersunken holes, uh, which the Warmoth did not. So I just took a Dremel, uh, kind of like a conical shaped bit and kind of gave them a little, little bevel edge kind of, so the screws will sit in a little better, a little more flush, but just a, just a little uh, observation, I guess. So Warmoth did not drill holes for the pickup covers. So I'm just going to put some pilot holes in. And then see how the screws fit with these holes. I won't go all the way down. But Drill bit I had. Okay. Okay, so we're going one size bigger and head. Head more down. It looks like uh, we're, we're together. Uh, I was a little concerned about the pickup level. I didn't put the foam under them like the ja um, regular Jazzmaster has, but um, they seem kind of high, but maybe that's just my mind. Um, so I'm just gonna drill a couple, two, two holes and get the pick guard kind of anchored, and then I'll do the rest. Um, off, off camera. I want to bore everybody. Let's get a good snug fit up against the. Mm. Got a couple screws in it. Okay, um, this is just one of the hidden joys of uh, working with building guitars. Uh, sometimes they don't work right. So I tested this a couple of times, uh, tap test, and I was getting a little fuzz out of the bridge pickup, uh, but nothing significant. So I'm just gonna pull it apart, and uh, I have a hunch maybe I might have knocked the pickup because uh, it was bouncing around a table here all the wiring for a couple of weeks when I was building and uh, I might have just broke one of the wires on it one of the real fine wires on the, the winding so that's my hunch but um, I'll open it up and see what's going on if I can tell maybe I'll have to get another pickup but we will we will see Okay, got everything apart here, and what I'm going to do for starters and troubleshooting is just swap out the bridge pickup to the neck wiring and uh, plug it back in and see if that works. That way it'll rule out um, the pickup itself if that's the problem.
Okay, so swapped out the pickups, uh, basically put the bridge one uh, onto the neck wiring and it seemed to work okay. However, it conked out when I went to the middle position and then to the, yeah, to the middle position. So that tells me it was hopefully or probably in the switch here. So what I did was I, I bent the little arm that comes out with the contact on it. So it's a little tighter and I'm going to give it another, another shot here and see if it's, if it's working. Okay. So these are the same part number that pickups. Um, so in theory, this should work if I just put them back together. What I'm going to do is just run a little emery paper through the one contact here in case it's got any varnish on it or anything like that. And I'll try to get a close up of what the heck I'm doing. Um, so, anywho, uh, on this three way switch here, I bent the one arm that goes to the bridge pickup. Uh, I just bent the inner arm a little bit so it's a little tighter contact and uh, just ran some emery cloth through it. And uh, hopefully, if uh, the pickup's good like it seems to be, having switched them out, um, I'm just going to solder them back in and uh, keep my fingers crossed. Crazier things have happened. So uh, let's see what happens here. Well, while resoldering the wires back together to the original configuration, I noticed this little wire here was separated in the bridge pickup. So it goes from the upper coil down to the lower coil. So that, I don't know when that happened. <laughs> it could have just happened, but uh, I'm gonna do my best to solder it back together. And uh, actually it's the lower, yeah, upper to lower coils here. So I'm gonna do my best to solder it back together and hopefully uh, maybe that'll fix the, the low output problem. Okay, so I ordered, seeing that this pickup was totally hosed up, I couldn't find any three lead ultra Jazzmaster pickups online. So I'm attempting a repair. I cut part of the plastic spool piece off and got a really fine wound wire. And I'm going to try and solder directly to the windings over to where it crossed over the magnet and uh, and I'll see if it works. It was kind of trashed anyway so if this works it'll be a minor miracle. So we'll give it a shot here. Okay so here's my first attempt at doing any kind of pickup work. This little wire I soldered in but there's really fine ones that go from one spool to the other. And this little piece here is kind of waxed onto this. I'm assuming it's a magnet of some sort or just a piece of metal. But anyway, this broke off and um, that little piece of wire, the single strand, I don't know if you can see it here, um, broke off. So I just put a really fine braided wire in and soldered it to the spool and back over to the solder joint. and. Uh, it seems to have given life back to the pickup. I don't know if it's probably not full strength, but uh, I'm gonna put it back in and string it up and see how we do. Okay, it looks like a possible snag here. I've never worked on a Jazzmaster before, but these Ultra pickups are, I think like twice, at least twice, if not more, maybe two and a half times the depth of a standard Jazzmaster. So that could be an issue here. Um, I'm gonna try and stick them in. I'm not using the foam that came with it. Um, so just a reminder, this is a warmth body and it doesn't seem like they routed it deep enough for the Ultra. It's probably routed fine for a, a standard Jazzmaster single coil pickup kinda, but we'll see. This is kinda like a double stacked coil here with a magnet in between them. I don't know. 
see how things look, put it together. So the Ultra had a two tones and volume control on the top, and the output jack was on the bottom or side here. So I'm taking that out. And if all good plans go, um, they don't always go sometimes. So we're gonna have a blank, a blank output jack here um, because the. 60s vibe only has the volume and tone, and then an output jack on the top. So we'll just go with that. Okay. That'll be there if I need it in the future. For whatever reason, I need a dual output. If people want to go. A computer and an amp. Alright. One step at a time. Okay, that goes up the jazz ultra. Okay, just popping the rollers in. And the switch up top here. I will say, I think these rollers are a little smoother than the American Ultras. Just the rolling, a little smooth, smoother action. Anywho, um, we get the volume and tone in. And we should be ready to go. All right, I did a tap test on pickups, and uh, <laughs> I've never had a Jazzmaster before, so I had a, a little worried I had a bad uh, bridge pickup, but once I got fiddling around with the, the rollers and the rhythm switch up here, uh, it looks like everything's working okay. So I get this plastic off, and I uh, get the rest of the screws in the pick guard. Put some strings on this and uh, I think we'll be in good shape. I'm going to put some any ball mines on it. So, um, I don't know, get a good view here, but we'll see how it turns out. I get some strings on it and I got to pick out some knobs out of the, the old uh, bin here. I think I got some black ones. So I'll probably put them on. Right, I got some more. I got another bag. But anyway, I'll get it stringed up and move it along. Oh, you're filming me. No, oh, yeah. This is going to be a problem. So I took my hood out. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get some good sounds out of that. Thanks. And it really goes well together. Back in the picture, you couldn't tell, but that was sort of um, 
It looked more black and white and gray. Yeah, it's anaconda, it's called. Oh yeah, it does look like snake scales. Yeah. So now that, if you push that switch down, mm -hmm. that isolates the regular volume and tone and toggle switch. So you just work with the rollers. That's going to be loud. That's the volume. <laughs> That's the tone. That's just the neck pickup with that switch down. So you're just working the neck pickup. Everything else is... Yeah, they're both bird's eye, but that's two pieces. Yeah, very nice. Oh, that won't do anything. Thank you.